Hi, and welcome to What the Phalange, the podcast where you watch every episode of Friends, discuss it, deconstruct it, and fan over it one episode at a time. My name is Quinn, pronouns Zizier, or they, them. And my name is Emily, pronouns she and her. This week, we're talking about season one, episode 23, the one with the birth. Aired May 9th, 1995, written by David Crane, Marta Kaufman, Jeff Greenstein, and Jeff Ashroff, and directed by James Burroughs. In this episode, the friends are all at the hospital. As Carol is giving birth, she finds herself without any real support as Rachel's flirting with a doctor, Monica is crying over not having a baby, Joey is helping someone else give birth, and Susan, Ross, and Phoebe are accidentally locked in a closet after Ross and Susan can't stop fighting. All right. Let's get into it. You also said that this episode aired on May 9th, and it says May 11th. <laughs> well. Doesn't matter. That's my brain for Now that. it's correct. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going? We've got some exciting things to announce okay, today, Quinn. Yeah. We have so many exciting news to announce, and also I'm, like, super stoked for this episode because... It's, like, one of the best episodes. Yeah, and this, it's, like... I would argue this is, like, the best episode of the season. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay, well, what's interesting is actually this episode was supposed to be the season finale. What? Yeah, originally it was written to be the season finale, and then it was either Jeff Ashoff or James Burroughs who basically insisted that that the birth of the child not be the like cliffhanger of the season, but essentially what they introduce in the next episode be right. the like main focus for the audience. Interesting. And, yeah. So there's a big reveal next episode, guys, if you haven't seen it before. That's exciting. I know. I'm so excited. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it's like it's an epic episode, and I feel like they put the effort into it in the sense that it because it was supposed to, in some sense, be a, a finale, and you yeah. can feel it. It's it's good. Yeah, it's great. I just think that the writing in this episode again is like incredible. Just the, the, th- the best. some of the aspects of the script are so good, and there's just like a really good energy. Like we just watched it all together, and. Um, like we were just like laughing our butts off, even yeah. though we've seen this episode like so many times and it's yeah. just, there's some great, great, great one-liners and I love it. I love this episode. Yeah. And I watched it, the Netflix watch party on Monday with Ray and I was laughing my butt off and, it, and then again, watched the DVD version just now and I was laughing my butt off. It's like, yeah. just like one thing after another, very well executed as well by all the actors. Mm-hmm. That's great. Like it's Ross great. falling in the closet, like. Yeah. It's really yeah. I, we had to rewatch that scene. We re we rewinded it and rewatched it because I wanted to see like how if he looks down to put his pl- his foot there, but he doesn't look down to put his foot there. He just like literally falls backwards. I wonder if it was a mistake. Like, was that supposed to happen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's great. I could imagine it's scripted because it just feels like the perfect little example of like Ross in a nutshell. I'm going to do this big masculine thing, but then actually collapse into a ball. <laughs> Aww, Ross. I want to like, I, I think I'm going to give Ross a break this episode. I think Ross, I'm going to like love this episode because he's having a baby. He's like, there's a few things that have, I'm just stoked about this episode. Yeah. There's like so many things that I want to talk about. So. Yeah. There's so many. And I mean, also Susan and Carol, like yeah, how Susan Car- could this Whenever ep- Susan and Carol is an episode, it's the best episode ever. That's just the way it works. <laughs> Exactly. Um, Okay, so we have some big announcements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll just like go through them now instead of the end because we always forget to use them at the beginning and then I think that we might lose some people by the end. So, announcements. The first one that I want to say is to thank Shannon for becoming a new patron. Thank you, Shannon. So Shannon is now one of our Smelly Cats, and we're very excited about it. Shannon has been listening from the very beginning and has been an active um, part of our community on Instagram. And so we're just like, just really stoked to now have the ability to have Shannon at our um, watch parties and everything. Yeah, thanks so much, Shannon. And also thanks to everyone else. Like, you have no idea how incredible it feels like every single time we get a new patreon we're just like oh my god like it's such an incredible feeling and i don't think words could express how happy we are to have you as a community like it means so much to us yeah yeah and like it was also like so amazing after like ali um became a patron and it was like i realized that we are now covering 
our like base costs to like basically host the platform, like use our hosting platform and like sound master each episode. So the episodes sound good. And which means that if we decide to put out a season two, we could potentially have a website. Possibly. Exactly. So exciting. So, um, maybe that will just lead us naturally into another announcement. Great. So, uh, technically, next episode is the last episode of the season. And because we didn't want to, like, there's going to be so much goodness in that episode, we didn't want to take away from it by, like, also making some, like, big announcements and, like, kind of having a discussion with everyone, like, if and what a season two would look like. So we've decided to do a bit of a live streaming wrap-up party final episode of season one. That's a long name for our party. We'll shorten it. The Facebook event will be very long. (laughs) We'll create an acronym. Um, But uh, yeah, so we're going to live stream on YouTube on December 15th at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what we're going to do with that is uh, in that time is like we're not going to be doing an episode of Friends because we ha- we'll have done the season finale by then as per usual. But in that one, we'll be answering questions. Mm-hmm. So start sending us any questions that you want answered. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll basically um, be talking to you guys about like if we're doing a season two, we'll be having made some bigger decisions by then and like what that could look like. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe like what we would need from you guys, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited for that. Also, like to all be live streaming together would be. I just can't wait to hang out with you guys. Yeah, woo woo. Um, okay. It'll be like a mini holiday party too because we love the holidays. Yeah, which maybe brings us into the second, the third thing we want to announce. I know. Look at us just yeah, flowing we're through flowing. this. This isn't scripted. We swear. <laughs> so, <laughs> for all of our patrons, we want to say that like once the season ends, we're. Um, We're going to continue doing some, at least through the holidays, doing some watch parties. So we've decided that we want to do some... um, Holiday party watch parties. Yeah. Like choosing maybe some like 90s holiday, maybe classics or something. um, And doing a watch party together where we can have some discussions about it. And then, you know, who knows if I convince Emily... To do a Christmas episode? Maybe we could do a Christmas episode. Maybe it would be a secret patron only um, oh. podcast episode. Quinn's gonna, Quinn's gonna, if you don't know me, you know that like when I'm off, I'm freaking off. Yeah. Like, so I, I'm taking 10, 12 days off for the holidays, and this girl's gonna sit and she's gonna probably not change her pants for three days. <laughs> so if a podcast comes out, you know that Emily was in dirty pants. <laughs> Fact. Fact. Um, it sounds it sounds like something we could do potentially pull off. Yeah. Okay. And then on the topic of watch parties, very excitingly, so we realized the other day that we had talked about doing an open watch party for everyone, like not just patrons, and we never actually did it because life got complicated and we forgot that we had made that commitment. So what better of an episode to do an open watch party where everyone, like it's open to the public, uh, is uh, for the season finale. So that's going to be on Monday, December the- 14th. No, I take it back. Monday, December 7th. Yeah, what day are we? Okay, yeah. So Monday, December 7th is the basically our next watch party, and it's going to be open to the public. So we'll announce it on Instagram, but essentially how it works is that you have to go over to our Patreon page where you'll find the link Mm -hmm. to um, bring you over to the teleparty. Which, so if you're listening to this podcast on its release date... Um, will be tomorrow that that uh, that watch party will be. So exactly. 12 p.m. Uh, 12, 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The idea was that our watch parties could fit in people's lunch breaks. Exactly. So, so be there or be square. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. You're cool no matter what. Is not being square not being cool? Well, Ross is a square. Does square mean being <laughs> cool? <laughs> no, square. Oh, no, you're like, right. Like, be square. square is the bad thing. Right. Uh Mm-hmm. Does that mean like you're boring? Yeah. I think I'm square. Yeah, you're totally a square. <laughs> what are you, a circle? I'm a squiggly line. Yeah, I was going to say. 
<laughs> you don't have an you don't have a close ending. You're just non nonstop squiggly line. I am chaos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like squares. They're so neat. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, moving on. <laughs> That's so weird. Okay. Okay. Um, so, any our, other announcements? Yes. Our oh biggest God. one, and I'm so excited for this one. I forget this one. Um, we now have a promo code. Oh, yeah. So, we have paired up with Salty Yoga Online. So, to give you an idea, one of our very own listeners, Kayla Stenny Street, who you may see active on our um, Instagram page, basically owns a studio in Peterborough that I used to work at as a yoga instructor. And uh, they are now moving, uh, they've created an online platform. And Emily and I are going to be teachers on that platform. Essentially, we'll have like pre recorded videos. And, you know, if you have a membership to the platform, you can access them. Anyway, so we have that lined up. And starting now, today, as we record this, we have a promo code. So in order to support the podcast, if you use our promo code, you'll get 25% off the first three months of subscription, and we will get a kickback for having brought you to the platform. So if you want to do yoga with us, come. you can subscribe now. Our videos won't be on until end, end of December, uh, January-ish. Um, and so you can join us uh, for that. But if you want to, you know, maybe gift a few of those subscriptions what, for friends for the holidays. What a better away. gift because it is great for the environment because there's very little packaging required. Also, oh, yeah. virtual is the way to go. And... The reality is I think that we all need a bit of movement when we're stuck inside. I mean, a lot of us are stuck inside, not everyone. Thank you, yeah. all essential workers out there. Yeah. Um, but uh, it just feels like a good thing to be giving right now. Yes. Anywho, so we're really excited to see you on the platform if you're there. And um, What is the promo code? That's a really good question. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I, I should tell you guys that our promo code is smelly cat what one word one word all, all caps. caps okay yeah great so we'll and add it in the show notes too yeah it'll be in the show notes there'll actually be a link to the page and also this three months with 25 percent off starts after your free seven day trial so you can try it out you don't have to commit to anything and then you can get 25 percent off that's amazing that's i know an amazing promo code i know not to toot our own horn but like you know, <laughs> so great. i i got you a deal folks <laughs> Woo <Woo-woo>. woo! <laughs> thanks kayla yeah thanks kayla and also tara who also owns the studio and it's so great to have like this is this is what i envisioned is that like this you, we can create a little community up. and we can all be like working with each other anyway um so right. we've talked long enough yes about let's get into this episode let's all right so season one episode 23 um i didn't i didn't write down like three things i want to talk about i just kind of want to talk yeah because right. I, I have so many things that are just like kind of scattered and like little off like not big heavy themes right um but i definitely throughout watching this this episode was thinking a lot of like this new thing that we're doing that at the end of the episode we talk about like who was the best friend and i thought that was a really interesting thing to think about while watching this episode Anyway. I already know. <laughs> I know. There's like an obvious answer, but then there's also like interesting – anyway, yeah. I just feel like there's a lot of good things going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's true. There's a couple of different cute things that happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, – We start off right in the hospital. And the whole episode takes place in the hospital. Yeah. And Which like is, I said I think last, that's the first time that that's ever happened. That an entire episode doesn't happen at Central Park. The first, but not the last. No, definitely not. <laughs> like I said last week, it seems like they built the set and they really wanted to get good use out of it over yeah, the, like, the next ten seasons. Oh, that's great. Um, so I find that this cold open does really set the scene. Mm-hmm. I mean, like Ross is being Ross, <laughs> Ross. <laughs> um. And then you have, like, you know, Joey setting up the scene where he's, like, talking about how things are gross and, you know, everyone else is like, how could you think that? Yeah. And I love Chandler's line here because yeah. Joey learns – I feel like 
there's a bit of an evolution for Joey in this episode, which is mm-hmm. really great. But he starts off being gross and out by this whole process and then ends up on a different side. And I love how Chandler kind of like knocks him down a little bit. Yeah. And is sort of like, like basically calls him out for being like super gross and old school. For yeah, like, like Joey's planning to have a baby in the 50s. Yeah. <laughs> In That's a, great. In a movie in the 50s. Yeah. That's <laughs> um, great. And I think that it's, like, it's very Mad Men of him. <laughs> That's true. It is. Um, and I, yeah, I just thought that that was really, mm-hmm. really great. And then we have Monica, who I think at this point she's already kind of freaking out a little bit about wanting a baby. Yeah. I don't know. Like, she hasn't really necessarily expressed wanting to have, like, longer term relationships with people necessarily yet. Like, and I think that... I think they really drive home throughout the whole 10 seasons Monica's love of potentially having a child, but less so her wanting to have a partner. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a few moments throughout the 10 seasons where she, like, talks about having a baby, but is, like, either not in a committed relationship or, like, doesn't even think of the idea of being in a committed relationship. She's just, like, really wants a baby. They really drive home that Monica wants a child. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, so I, I think that this is cute. And I, I really like – yeah, anyways, we're getting too far into it because I love Chandler's, like, proposal of – did you ever have the pact? I think you asked that as a poll. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think, like, a good almost, like, 50% of people said – I think it was, like, I made a pact or... with someone when I was, like, 14 who I don't even talk to now. But <laughs> good yeah, thing I'm I... – Maybe married. <laughs> so, yeah, 47% of people said yes, they did have, a, like, a backup agreement or pact with, like, a friend to have kids or or get married by, like, a certain time. Yeah. And I, I think I remember talking about that when I was a kid. And I feel mm-hmm. like that's more of something that I talked about when I was, like, a kid. Yeah. But I remember you specifically telling me when we were kids, you being like, oh, no. I'm going to have a baby when I'm 29 years old. That way, I when I hit 30s, I already have a kid. I was like, that's a weird thing to want. (laughs) I don't think that was, like, when I was a kid. I think that was, like, I remember, so, yeah. Anyway, I remember being, like, in my early 20s and having, like, set a goal because I didn't want to be older than 30 before I have kids. Yeah, that's interesting. Now I don't want kids. Yeah. Look at that. Good thing you're older than 30. It worked out. (laughs) Look at that. Um, Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's when I was, you know possibly going to be engaged, knew who I was going to marry, Wow, was ready to settle down, knew what my career was going to be, and now I'm 30 and I'm a total mess. <laughs> no, not a mess, just not that, and that's great. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> who isn't a mess <laughs> right now? <laughs> Honestly, I don't think anyone's like, this pandemic is great. <laughs> well, maybe Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. <laughs> I think we, like, if anyone played a drinking game listening to our podcast, they could get drunk by just, like, drinking every time we say Jeff Bezos. <laughs> I think we mentioned how much we hate him a lot. Yeah. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Oops. Um, okay. So in this, fir- in the first scene, maybe we don't, we don't even need to breeze through each scene traditionally, but, um, you know, when Carol and Susan get wheeled in, um, Ross is freaking out. He's like, you stopped at the gift shop. How can you stop at the gift shop? You're giving birth. And like, this is so cute. You know, they're taking the time to like get settled. Like they're clearly not overreacting, panicking like Ross is. Yeah. And I want to dispel a myth here. So one is that your water breaking is not a like a an exact sign of be going into labor like yeah. a lot of people go into labor before their water break <laughs> like water breaks you don't have to rush to the hospital immediately when your water breaks it's probably want to get somewhere more comfortable at the very least yeah though. for sure <laughs> um okay so then um they're fighting obviously ross and susan what else is new what else is new i also want to point out that like one of them is like 54 seconds ha you know they're timing their with their watches and they're comparing their swiss courts and then ross is like 59 seconds ha and it's just five seconds is a long it's a long time for your to watch to be off like considering like how many minutes and seconds in a day are there like it it sounds more just that they didn't record properly and they were using their watches as 
yeah. like proof of their skills or something. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It didn't make any sense. It was just like you guys are off. <laughs> but I do like how when the doctor walks in, he says, how's my favorite parenting team? I really yeah. like that like use of the expression. And I feel like that's the only time throughout the entire episode that like the staff of the hospital like recognize them as a team versus like the nurse keeps referring to – to Susan as a lesbian life partner. Like, you don't need to use lesbian life partner. No one's like, your straight life partner. (laughs) It's just awkward. So awkward and weird. And it's like, you could tell that, like, a lesbian was not consulted in the writing of this script. Like, like maybe, maybe back in the 90s, this is, like, more of a way to refer to it because it was, like, more of a kind of, um, like, a re- was that taking back of the term not that lesbian it's just like term but like yeah but taking back of the term in a way of like no i'm a lesbian life partner i'm not just like some person you know but it just does it feels like a weird way to consistently yeah, consistently just, reiterate it it just feels like continuously affirming how it's like not the norm yeah you know and like always having to like instead of like my straight life partner yeah you know like if, if it, anyway yeah. Um, but Emily, you brought up the nurse. Do you want to share with everyone um, a little the bit about nurse? the nurse? Yeah. So the nurse is, if you didn't recognize, uh, Estelle Leonard, <laughs> yeah. Joey's agent. Obviously, it's not. Like, they're not trying to say that the nurse is – like, Estelle Leonard is the nurse. But they're, the, it's the same actress as June Gable who plays both Estelle Leonard and the nurse in this situation. Yeah. And so if you um, watched the DVD version of uh, the one with the butt earlier in this season, you would have seen Estelle. Um, but oh, but right. if you hadn't seen her, then you wouldn't know. Yeah, Interesting. exactly. Unless you've seen other seasons, which I feel a fair amount of our listeners have. Right. Um, but just to draw that parallel, well, or like tie it together, the yeah. same actor playing two different characters. This is the only time that she plays a different character than yeah, Estelle. She's though. only playing Estelle for the rest of the show. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um. Okay. So so then obviously Rachel comes into the hospital. Uh. Carol, um, Susan, and Ross both leave the room to go get uh, Carol ice chips, only for Rachel to immediately walk in with ice chips, <laughs> um, and then just asking, to, like, if she can support Carol in any way, and then immediately being distracted, and rather than supporting Carol, um, going to flirt with the cute doctor, who Rachel seems to have a weird obsession with cute doctors, which Chandler later points out. <laughs> 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 they do it really well. Yeah. Also, I want to point out that a hundred percent of people that we polled said that they didn't like chunkies. Oh wow. I've never had a chunky, but I definitely won't now. <laughs> I feel like I've had a chunky. Aren't chunkies? Um maybe I'm not. Maybe never mind. I don't know. What do I know? Doesn't matter. I don't need to look it up. <laughs> Do they still make them? That's more of my question. That's a good question. Oh, here. This is why I wouldn't like it. Oh, yeah. Ew. (laughs) Okay, share, share. It's got milk chocolate and raisins and peanuts. What are you – like, it's like a chocolate-covered trail mix. Not cool. This doesn't sound bad. Throw some oats in there and I'd have it. What? That sounds worse. What are you doing to my chocolate bar? (laughs) I'm turning it into a granola bar. Yeah, but not – I'm turning it into a cliff bar, Emily. (laughs) Wow. No. Don't stop for chunkies. I agree with Roz. <laughs> um, okay. Anyways, what are what else are you looking at right now through the polls? Well, okay. So on the doctor note. Yes. Okay. Can we just say what Chandler says? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, yeah. So Chandler is like, what's your – like, Rachel, what's your obsession with doctors? Was your father a doctor? And she's like, yeah. Why? And he's like – no reason. And he gives this, like, look to Monica and Phoebe, and both of them, like, kind of give him a look back, and they're like, oh, like, talk about Freud from our earlier episode. <laughs> okay, there's two things that I want to talk about okay. here. Okay. Let's start with, like, the least of the, the issues here. One is that on our polls, 100% of people said that they would not be more interested in dating someone after they found out that they were a doctor. Yeah, well... Doesn't really matter. Because I I would. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I guess I mean like it's cool like to date someone who has like this vast knowledge of the human body. That's something yeah. that I think is really cool. But like in the like 
I would be more interested in dating them more for that knowledge and not in like the fact that like they're a doctor in the way that Rachel kind of like Rachel's not like I'm really interested in this person because he's like understands anatomy you know what I mean like she she likes the title doctor yeah exactly which like she clearly gets that from you know you know she almost married Barry and almost took his doctor title so I mean it's classist as yeah like as AF yeah but as Frasier. As Frasier. <laughs> From <laughs> Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess, like, any, anyway, her situation is classist. But I definitely think that, like, I don't know. if I mean, if you're already interested in someone, wouldn't you be more interested in them if they were a doctor? I just find it – maybe it's, like, I wanted to be a doctor. And so, mm. therefore, it's, like, I think it's very cool. I would love to hang out with you like i guess i answered the question from the perspective of like the way that rachel is more interested in him because he's a doctor in the sense that like he's like you know i don't know not like i didn't think of it as the perspective of like he's got like this cool knowledge about things that i also appreciate right you know yeah that's true so so then on that note of rachel and then everyone like giving the eye thingies and like freaking out because her dad is a doctor i just like want to point out that I have an issue with how freely people create this concept of, like, daddy issues in women. And I had, like, quotation marks when I said that. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, it's something that I've been thinking about, like, a lot more and more over time and how it's, like, you know, we really kind of, like, type women specifically to have, like, daddy issues and Mm -hmm. it's, like, And it's, like, almost, like, a way to, like, write off women or, like, I don't know. It's – I want to agree with you, but I also think that people very – and and I think that the daddy issue is specifically – like, I don't think it necessarily applies in this situation because I feel like usually when people say, like, she's got daddy issues, like, usually – they're like they've hypersexualized this woman and that's why they're saying that she's got daddy issues. Like she's like either a stripper in the movie or she's a sex worker of some sort. Like there's like they've kind of sexualized her and are like, yeah, she's got daddy issues. I don't really feel like they're doing that in this scenario. And I also feel like people frequently say that men have mommy issues and they do. Well, okay, that's no, part of I'm my totally point kidding. is that everyone has issues. I do think that it's everyone's got mommy and daddy and, you know, parent issues. <laughs> I, I do think that it's held against women in a certain way of like in the same line of like how we call women crazy very freely. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I can and see that. I do think that there's a link here with him asking, like, oh, is your dad a doctor or something? And right. she says yes, that he's like directly tying it to being like a problematic thing that she likes doctors. Whereas right. like I think it's problematic, but more on the side of like it's classist. Yeah. And that's the issue there is that like she has like classist issues that were instilled in her. Right. And her like from having grown up in like a wealthy family with her father being a doctor right. and doctors in society are kind of given like the one of the highest marks of like being like knowledgeable and wealth and especially yeah, in, like yeah. the states you know and so i think like the issue is classism here but they're framing it as like quote like, unquote daddy freudian issues, issues right yeah. and and i think that like it's too easy that like we throw that especially at women yeah, totally. I I definitely agree with that. I I do also think though that like in this scenario specifically Chandler was like trying to make a joke and he wasn't expecting her answer to be yes. <laughs> like I think it was more just like he was like trying to be silly about it and be like, "Oh, like is your dad a doctor?" like kind of in this ridiculous way. And then when she said yes, he was like, "Oh, like <laughs> awkward." <laughs> like this joke is like doesn't work as well because it's true, you know. Like yeah, no, totally. But yeah, no, I, I totally, I, I, I wouldn't put it past Chandler making like a Freudian joke, you know. But yeah, um, totally. All right. So then, what else did you want to chat about? Let's talk about a little bit about the fact that um, uh, Joey is sitting in the in the waiting room. Yes. Um and. Uh, I guess everyone has dispersed. Oh, they've gone to go get coffee or whatever. And right. Then... I mean, it also looks like he might be in, like, a different waiting room. No. 
Are you in the same place? Well, because you know what? I don't know. I thought it was maybe a different waiting room, and then there was another waiting room specific for birthing. Anyway, whatever. No, because he... there's like a sign next to the door that he's like, all the pregnant ladies seem to be going through here. Yeah. And there's like a sign that says like... But they uh, were all there and, and Susan and Carol went through that door. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I don't know. This is weird. <sighs> I think that it's the exact same scene. Okay, well, <laughs> possibly the same room. <laughs> right. Joey is watching TV in this room. He is watching the Knicks and mm-hmm. then meets... Do we know her name? Do we get her name? Uh, I have to believe we do. I feel like we should have at least looked that up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. I don't remember her name, but we do get her name for sure. Um, and she, he's like going to start arguing with her, and then like turns around. and He's like, "Whoa!" Like, don't want to argue with a pregnant lady. I don't know why he doesn't want to argue with a pregnant lady, but it's just like something he doesn't feel like doing, I guess. Um, and then he's like, where's the father? Where's the father? Because she starts going into contraction. Which is just, like, funny and weird because, like, like would you call for a doctor at this point or would you call for the father? You know well, what I mean? Like, <laughs> I, I, I feel like you wouldn't call for a doctor when someone starts going into contractions. You wouldn't be like, where's the doctor? We need someone to, like, take care of this baby right now. Like, I guess so. Um, but it it is weird that he's calling for, like, where's the father? Like, way to assume, Joey. <laughs> But then he gets kind of like called out on it because he's like, yeah, when your oh. friends who has a le- lesbian life yeah. partner is in another room, <laughs> we need a father or a lesbian life partner. <laughs> so funny. Oh, her name's Lydia, by the way. Lydia. Okay. Yeah. Um. So I think this storyline is very interesting. And I also want to point out that like moving forward, there's going to be multiple times in like the multiple times that people, that this group of friends end up in the hospital for entire episodes or two. <laughs> That Joey has his own little side story mm-hmm. in the hospital, experiencing something oh, so true. very different in, like, a parallel place in the hospital. They do that a lot sometimes with, like, the hospital episodes. Yeah. Um, they, like, put them on their own little stories, adventures in the <laughs> hospital. <Man>. Um, <laughs> and so so then this story unravels. Do we want to, like, just continue down this one and then meet everyone back up? Yeah, sure. On the flip not? side? Um. <laughs> That didn't make sense, but I'm going to go with it. <laughs> Please meet everyone back up on the flip side. <laughs> it made sense to me. I, I liked it. Okay. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So he is helping this woman have a baby. Um. And he actually – so she's on the phone with her mom, I guess. Um. And she says, like, of course – I'm not alone. Joey is here. <laughs> like, she's like, this is such a classic moment. Like, being, like, trying to – Get your mom off your back. (laughs) Or, like, comfort your parent, you know? Yeah. Like, a way that's, like, stop being stressy out. You're probably just stressing me out more. Like, let me just comfort you, you know? Um, And then Also, I just want to point out, like, that's a really intense thing to, like, go to the hospital and do this alone. Like, I've had to go for, like, multiple MRIs and, like, went to the hospital alone. And, like... It's, like, a freaky thing being in a hospital alone for, like, large procedures and, like, big yeah. things like that. And, like, giving birth alone it's in a hospital. Level, yeah. Like, that's intense. Yeah, that is very intense. You're right. Um, but, yeah, like, so. Like, like, badass, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, anyways, yeah, so he I, – I think it's actually really cute how he just, like, decides he's going to stay and, like, support her. They kind of argue a little bit because – um he's like yeah where like where is the father and he says a line and i find it interesting because i i think that it's like a little bit of shows kind of joey a little bit he says like if someone was having my baby i'd want to know about it and i think that like we often think of joey as like um you know like like having sex and then moving on and not caring and not calling anyone and blah 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 but like you know I find it interesting that, like, he's like, well, if, like, if someone got pregnant who I had sex with, like, I'd want to know, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not saying that, like, you have to tell someone if you're pregnant with their child, you know? But, like, I just – I think it's, like, an interesting perspective from Joey because Joey doesn't, like, seems to be the kind of person who just, like, kind of has sex nonchalantly. Mm -hmm. But, like, it seems like through this line he's recognizing the consequences maybe. I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. No, I, I don't see – like, I don't disagree with you, but there's just something there still, right, where it's like he uses women like toilet paper to have sex with them and has, like, zero respect for women that he does have sex with. Mm-hmm. Lots of respect for any women who are his friends that he doesn't have sex with. Yeah. Um. And then this person ends up falling into that category, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, that – statement like makes sense yes we'll also see in like later seasons him reacting to like the concept that condoms are only 98 percent effective and he literally has a complete meltdown and (laughs) but then there's also another episode in which someone says joey what would you do if ever someone told you that they were pregnant someone you slept with was pregnant and he goes and he like panics and he's like i have to go make a call like as in like He's, like, ready to go make a call and deal with something that he did. But, like, should he have made that call before he potentially found out that someone was pregnant, you know? Do you remember what scene I'm talking about? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, it doesn't matter. He's, like, I think it's just an interesting perspective of, like, would Joey step up? And, you know, I think that he would. And I yeah. think that we see that he would. I think that he would. I just don't think it makes it any less gross what he does yeah because it's like he puts people into two categories right specifically women he puts women into two categories right it's like the women that he respects and the women that he runs through like toilet paper and it's like if you were to get someone he runs through like toilet paper and is like willing to like manipulate and cheat and you know all these sort of things like if suddenly she were to be pregnant with his kid then he'd just like move her over to the other category and because he has this other category then he's like considered like respectful of women mm-hmm. but it's not like a full picture of his actions is he considered respectful for women i don't think people like look at joey as a character and are like he's respectful to women i mean he's definitely com- is like the nice guy I'm putting that in quotations, right? Like, he's, like, the nice guy where he's, like, look, he's so nice with his friends. He's so loyal and, like, yada, yada. And so it it allows people to, like, turn a blind eye to, like – I mean, like, Joey's – like, Joey is gross in this show and the reality is – but, like, no one says anything directly to yeah. him. The women actually, sometimes say things to him, which right, sucks. The but women it's have to usually, be the ones to say things. Yeah, but it's usually just sort of, like – backhanded more for like the butt of the joke kind of like expressing oh you're gross you know Mm -hmm. and you know at other times he's encouraged especially by the guys and it's just okay i have to bring it up because it's just so interesting to see the contrast and like i keep making these parallels like right now um emily and i actually our whole family just sort of watching the morning show which is produced and, like, the two main actors are uh, Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. And so it's just really interesting to see, like, Jennifer Aniston in this show that actually, like, kind of basically talks about sexual assault in the workplace and, like, what that looks like and, like, talking about, like, responsibilities of, like, the culture of the workplace and, like, mm-hmm. there's all these really intense and big conversations that need to be had that are being had in this show. And it's just, like, interesting because if you parallel it to this, you know, it's, like, no one here takes on the accountability of their friend, like, basically just willy-nilly, like, disposing of women, manipulating women, cheating on women, mm-hmm. um, And, you know, no one ever, like, sits him down and is like, this is not okay. Yeah, look, I definitely agree with you. I'm not – yeah, I I think that I would would argue how you're saying he's the nice guy. I think Ross is, like, more of the nice guy who, Mm. like, manipulates and is shitty to women. But I I don't think that – I think Joey is, like, seen as, like, the pig. His friend's – actively often call him a pig and like they think he's gross and they just kind of like decide to turn a blind eye like you said but personally as someone who's like existed in many groups of friends 
Like, I've existed in groups of friends where, like, there's just a pig in your group of friends. And, like, he's really nice to, like, the women of your groups of friends. And you're, like, and you point it out every once in a while. But then it gets exhausting to constantly be having to check this dude who's not checking himself. Mm -hmm. And, like, there's a whole bunch of reasons why you still care about him as a human being. And you're, like, hoping that through repeated conversations and repeated exposure to healthy, like, respectful relationships, he's going to become a better person you're not just gonna like throw them out of your friend group right so it's like like i i don't necessarily think that it's like the women's responsibility in this friend group to like be like oh this guy's a pig like i don't want him around anymore you know i'm definitely not saying it's the women's responsibility and like especially the guys do encourage him very often Um, even when it goes against, like, the actual values of the character, like, Ross often is very encouraging to Joey, even though Ross's values are very much more in line with, like, wanting to settle down and get married and long-term relationship and, um, doesn't really want to just have random sex, but would rather be dating the person. Yeah. Um, but I don't mean, like, he's, like, the nice guy, because I definitely think you're right. Like, Ross follows more in the the nice guy, but I just mean the nice guy syndrome, you know, where, like, mm-hmm. people are, like, oh, he does all these, like, shitty things, but, like, he's also just, like, a – he's also, like, a nice guy, though. Yeah. You know, sure. and it, it's as though, like, because this person is, like, a good person, it, it – it's, Quote, like, unquote, yeah. Yeah, good – quote, unquote, good person, kind of – or is, like, a nice person, it, like, it means that they're not – insert anything here whether that's yeah. like racist or sexist or transphobic or yeah. it's like though those things coexist yeah. right like be a great and wonderful and nice person and still have and still be sexist and still be racist and for sure and i yeah i guess i just like i think that like i don't think that they're putting out this show at least in the first season i think later they kind of um evolve Joey's character a little bit but I don't think like anyone's watching this first season and being like like Joey is respectful to women you know like I don't think that's necessarily maybe in this episode they are they are they are doing that yeah it's hard it's very hard because like you know I think we've talked about this a little bit in past episodes where it's like the perspective of um like Joey being a good person and what that looks like. And anyways, yeah. Yeah. Because it's, it's kind of like one of those things and maybe it's more conversation to talk about like in later episodes, but it's like you feel in this episode, like he's having a character evolution Mm -hmm. and maybe like in one aspect of his character, he is, but at the end of the day, he still remains the same. And so it's sort of like this, this pattern of like him running through women like toilet paper and treating them as such. But then at the same time, like having these sort of like evolutions that you think will amount to something, but then it just makes you like him in certain ways and be more willing to turn a blind eye to uh, like this yeah. other aspect of him. Yeah, that's true. Anyway. All Anywho, right. So, so he, he, gets eventually- on the, he gets on the phone with yeah. her mom and – she hangs up on him. Well, she hangs up on him. And I just think this is a really funny – this reminds me of this funny little tidbit that I heard about – I don't remember exactly which actor, but it's, like, the equivalent of Brad Pitt, essentially, like, in that sort of, like, type of mainstream Hollywood th- heartthrob actor. So apparently um, his parents basically will go to events and they're – don't they're, they don't – People who don't know them don't know who their son is and will ask them, like, what do your kids do? And they'll say, like, oh, well, you know, one is an actor and one is a doctor. And all of them will never ask about the actor because they just assume that he's, like, some... Like, out of work. Out of work kind of thing. And they're always like, oh, tell us about, you know, the doctor. (laughs) And it's just... Then later they find out that it's, like, the equivalent of, like, Brad Pitt. (laughs) Wow, that's funny. Anyway, so Joey's not alone in this. And even if he was rich and famous, they would still hang up on him. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Um, Yeah, yeah, it's – that's funny. Um, So, so, from there – 
Yeah, so then the baby, well, the baby is born. He's like, they're they're complaining about, they're fighting about the Knicks the entire time, which, which I is think so is hilarious. Cute. Also, when Joey gets really into like the, hey, hey, ho, ho. <laughs> but, but, but. <laughs> it's great. He's so like, cute. Very encouraging. <laughs> um, and then the baby's born and I guess he goes to get like, he, he gets um, a little balloon, which is the cutest little balloon balloon ever i didn't think i'd ever say that but a little crayon balloon yeah it's kind of creepy at the same time too though interesting yes maybe (laughs) but he goes to get it and like he's about to walk in and then sees that i guess the 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 father of the child has come Mm -hmm. and which by the way this dad is an idiot (laughs) he's like he's like so is this her And she's like, no, this is, this is not your baby. This is a loner. <laughs> okay, I don't think he's being an idiot. I think he's asking, like, a typical question to introduce the conversation of, like, show me the kid. Right. And she's just mean. But also that that's, like, kind of part of that is cut out in uh, the Netflix yeah. version. Um. Yeah, and so then he, he like, kind of just leaves the balloons and then walks away with the little crayon balloon. And I think it's, like, it's cute. He kind of... Yeah, he's like, and then later on he talks to them and they were like, where were you? And he was like, ah, having a baby. (laughs) (laughs) It's great. But uh, yeah, and like, I think the idea is that like at the beginning of the episode, he was like, oh, that stuff is so gross. Don't talk to me about it. And then at the end of the episode, like he's like helped a woman go through birth and like is, you know, maybe less grossed out by it now. Yeah, I mean, like we're jumping ahead, but also when he's like in the room, one Carol starts to push or it's like around that time, he's like talking her through it's ah you're fine don't worry about it like nine centimeters unaffected you know it's great it's very cute okay so i kind of want to backpedal a little bit to uh the whole rachel uh sorry the whole monica thing actually okay so monica and chandler like where chandler said like he wants to make a pact like we talked about and then he makes a hilarious (laughs) joke where he's like oh no this parachute is a knapsack like he's just like (laughs) and then like throws himself over the back of the chair to run away which is so dramatic but great it's like probably one of the it's just oh Chandler that's like one of the reasons why he's so great yeah it's so good and then the whole time so she's like really upset kind of this whole time she's upset when someone comes out with twins because she's upset that they have two and she has none <laughs> so ridiculous and then um she's uh then she's like talking to her mom on the phone and again freaking Judy Yeller is the worst I know and she's right saying um you know I'm only 26 like what do you mean this is your only chance to have a grandchild I'm only 26 like I'm not even thinking about babies oh my yet. god Judy, sit I know. down. Judy sucks. <laughs> Judy sucks hard. Man. Um, and then, like, Monica turns to Chandler and, like, he wraps his arm around her and supports her. And, like, this he is He also, moment- like, takes the opportunity to, like, takes the phone out of Monica's hand and goes... Yeah, and, and hangs, hangs it, it up. up. Which I think- Chandler's, like, a contender for best friend in this episode. I know, I exactly. Say. That's what yeah. I was going to say. He's, like, sarcastic and stuff, but... Throughout all of it, like, he's there being very supportive to Monica. Yeah. You know, he's, like, offering her, like, the pact, and he's, like, you know, yeah. does the right thing of, like, hanging up the phone on her mom for yeah. her and, like, comforts her and, like... Yeah, it's cute. He, like, he tries to him. make light of it, but it's very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. It's very cute. Um, he's sweet in his sarcastic Chandler way. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, and then Rachel's still hitting on the doctor... Um, okay this is a weird scene it doesn't really make sense yeah so So, she is she's talking to the doctor and the doctor is like oh so like are you single are you seeing anyone and she's like yeah and he's like oh well you know i find it hard to date and she's like oh like you could find it hard to date you're a cute doctor and then (laughs) who to do (laughs) rachel don't Um, be so forward (laughs) and then um and, and then he's like well you know like you're a waitress. Like, do you ever get to the end of the day and you're just like, if I have to look at one more cup of coffee? And, like, the idea is implying that, like, he stares at vaginas all day, that he doesn't want to date people with vaginas. Like, I, is that what he's trying to say? Like, he doesn't want to Or, like, date? he doesn't – yeah, it's it's weird and unclear. And I feel like I've spent all these years trying to figure out exactly what he's saying. You know, this- he, he's, he's saying, like, he doesn't want he, – he finds himself not wanting to have sex often. Or be around, for right? Vaginas, and so is it sort of like people don't want to date him because he doesn't want to have sex, or is he saying that like he doesn't has a hard time be- being in the room with? Vaginas? <laughs> yeah, like it's it's unclear. It's 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 a little weird. It's it's well crafted, or though. is it that he's saying that he like doesn't 
want to reciprocate. Ah. And that's... And so then she's, like, taking off her earrings and kind of walks away. Right. I think that maybe that's, like, the main point there is that he's, like, I just don't want to reciprocate. I don't want to stare at a vagina. But anyways. Vagine. Vagine. Okay. Anyways. As Sid would say. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Now let's get to the most important part of this episode, which is um, the fact that they named the baby Jordy. Without yeah. Ross. Yeah, that's rude. That is super rude. I would be so annoyed. <laughs> I'd be so annoyed. Like, yeah, let, we're doing it for Jordy. He's like, who the hell is Jordy? <laughs> <laughs> so good. And I then, mean, like, also, he could pick the fight more appropriately later. Yeah. Like, a great, you know, alternative to put there, Ross, is like, I don't think I agreed on Jordy. Maybe we should have this conversation later. Can we maybe not? refer to the child as Jordy until we all confirm on this and then focus what? in on... no way is that a normal way that a normal person would say that? Um, like... Right. Some riff off of that. <laughs> the point being is that he doesn't have to pick an entire fight over yeah, it. I, I think you expect these characters to have, like, really healthy conversations at all time and to be at their emotional best at all time. I like... am just giving alternatives <laughs> that could be healthier. I'm not saying that people can't be people. I'm just saying... It's, yeah, it's, yeah, for sure. It's not It's not the best way to, to pose that. Um, <laughs> oh, that's great. But um, also, but, but in all fairness, right, like, yes, people do not have to be perfect at all times. People uh-huh. are allowed to not, like, be able to express how they feel without having to, like, say it in the most perfect way and still be heard and listened to. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but, so they yeah, argue, and So then they're, then they're arguing. They're upset. They're basically told. They're to, kicked out. They're kicked out of the room. By Carol, which totally in her right to do totally valid come on guys you she has just, two birthing partners and neither of them are working out i for just her. feel bad that like carol's got like her whole fucking like ex boy uh, ex-husband's friends and family there but she doesn't have like her family or friends there at all or susan's family and friends like obviously they wrote this because it's like the episode but like i feel like they could have easily written in like at least Carol's sister or something like even if she's an extra in the background like what they did when in the episode where Nana died twice like they have Judy's right. sister there and she like barely has two lines and they still like included her to make it more realistic but like this is just weird <laughs> yeah it's all very very strange but um yeah no so anyways so this is so then they r- walk out into the hall and they're arguing with mm-hmm. each other and Phoebe comes around the corner with her guitar. But, but first I want to say one of the best lines in the show. Okay, go ahead. Which is when um, C- Carol's uh, – basically Ross is like, Susan uh, – Carol never kicked me out of, room, out of a room before you came along. And then Susan goes, there's a lot of things Carol never did before I came along. <laughs> so great a burn. <laughs> like so freaking good like a little rough because of the fact that like you know it's like she is basically saying i stole this woman away from you and like i can imagine that would suck is no she's saying that like because i actually right. disagree with that like i actually think that what ross is doing in this situation is like he's just blaming susan, susan for carol leaving him when it, that's not the case right of course like not. of course not like carol's gay and left him because it's not compatible to be gay and be with ross <laughs> and but, so yeah but, but then he at takes, the same time like ross was cheated on right so it's like no i know i know that it's complicated but like mm-hmm. he does spend a very long time you know like does he ever fully get over like shift his anger away from susan no. and make it like yeah. and see the situation as it actually is only in pockets no like he like see here yeah yeah exactly and it's sort of like he just like takes the easy way out to like target his emotions at a person um mm-hmm. anyway um yeah so then they phoebe comes along and kind of like herds them into a closet i love the phoebe's so good yeah, in this and she looks I would also fantastic in this yeah, episode too. She looks so great. Um, I would argue that this is like one of my favorite scenes of all time in Friends when they're in this closet. Oh yeah, um, it's such a good 
scene. And such good acting, too, by both of them. and Or all three of them, I should say. Um, but, yeah. So, they're, they get stuck in the closet. Um, and then Carol's, like, left alone. Has no support. <laughs> Except for from, like, Rachel flirting with the doctor in front yeah, of her. Yeah. So ridiculous. <laughs> um, and they're screaming in the closet. Uh, and then he's like goes to go push down the door or whatever, and he falls into the bucket, which we already talked about was like so well executed. We don't even, it, I don't even know if it's like real or not. Like if it was scripted, like was I? I wonder if like the thing that was actually scripted was for him to run back and then like shove himself into the door and hurt himself. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It, looks... it was a mop bucket scripted. I don't know. <laughs> it was really well executed, whatever yeah. it was. And also, I gotta say, so Carol. Uh, I mean, Susan did not win best episode, but for me in this, in this scene where she has like her spaghetti strap dress with a t-shirt underneath, and then she has a big hoodie tied around her waist and that like ankle length dress with some like, like Timberland boots or the equivalent of yeah in that like electrician's boots. Yeah. That is like. That is a great yeah. outfit. Key. I think I said that was my favorite outfit. Also, hashtag gay. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So good. In the most literal of senses, guys. <laughs> um, um, yeah. And so then um, – well, So then basically Ross and Susan start bickering again. They're going at each other. And – I think they both say really valid things in this argument. Oh, yeah. Like, Ross is like, you get to go home with this baby. Like, this is something I've wanted. This is something I, like, you know, I married Carol. I wanted to have a baby with her. I wanted to start a family with her. And she, like, left me. Like, obviously, for circumstances she couldn't control. But, like, she left me and took my baby with her. You know what I mean? In a certain extent. And, like... And then she argues back. She's like, no one's going to know who I am. Like, I'm not, like, blood related to this child in the way that you are. And, like, people are not going to validate my relationship with this child in the way that they're going to validate your relationship with this child. And then he gets – it's a great line. It's not a valid line, but not it's a valid such line. a fucking hilarious line. <laughs> He's just like – she's like, there's Father's Day, there's Mother's Day, there's no lesbian lover day, <laughs> which again, calling herself a lesbian <laughs> lover, you know? And he's like, every day is lesbian lover day. <laughs> which is just – I mean – It's so it's, funny. I, I mean, it's really funny – but it's also like the most obnoxiously naive in a harmful way kind of like yeah. statement and perception to have, yeah. right? It's just like completely erasing the actuality of the situation. For and like sure. the but hardships I- of like being a lesbian couple trying to raise a kid yeah. in the 90s is just like – but I wonder if, like, he's saying it in the sense that, like, to him, every day is lesbian lover day because every single day he doesn't get to be with Carol and with his, well, like, now with his kid, you know, in the sense of, like, every day to him is lesbian lover day. <laughs> yeah. And, like, like you said, they're both – it's it's just a very well-scripted moment yeah. because it's so revealing of, like – their individual fears too, and insecurities, yeah. right? And it's like, and it's just like an actually like really beautiful way of demonstrating how like both of them are making really valid points from their perspective, right? Like, mm-hmm. and how like two people can be in conflict with each other and they're both like making good points, yeah. you know, like because they are both equally as scared of being like shoved out or less involved with or having you know their expectations or their like picture perfect life taken away from them and blaming the other for it you know for sure and it's like it's just i think it's a really well scripted Mm -hmm. moment you know yeah yeah this is great and and then and then we get the best speech of like all of friends from Um, phoebe like phoebe's words of wisdom we should start keeping track of phoebe's Phoebe's words words of wisdom or something but What I really like about Phoebe's speech the most is that you can tell, like, from the way it's scripted, it wasn't done in, like, the sense of, like, I want to teach you guys a lesson. Yeah. Like, she's, like, just does it so, like, nonchalant casually. Like, she's not trying to, like, be, like, 
guys, like, let me tell you this story. Like, she's like... Yeah, let me give you a reality check or let me, like, teach you a thing or two. Like, she's just, like, being so genuine in it. She's just like, this is so nice. And then Ross is like, what are you talking about? Like, how is this so nice? I just... I'm getting, like... I'm, like, well enough just thinking about it, guys. And she's just, like... She basically just says, like, when I was growing up, like, my... She barely had a family. She's like, she says, I barely had enough pieces of parents to make a whole one. And then she's like, and here you are, like, arguing over who gets to love this baby the most. And it's not even here yet. And it's just so cute. It's like, uh, <laughs> Quinn is tearing up for the I record. I am tearing up. I think it, like, I mean, this, I think I've walled up every single time I've seen this yeah. scene always. But I do think that it, like, hits a little bit harder with, like, now Nora in our lives. And yeah. I see, like, this baby who, like, has so many needs, right? Like, mm-hmm. and is so innocent and at, like, the actual whim and, like, of whatever the caretakers, you know, think is right or wrong or can give to this little mm-hmm. tiny growing human and is so innocent to what's happening but so such a victim to it all. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, Nora's like so lucky that she's like, you know, living through this pandemic and literally has like six full adult humans in this household like like trying to get attention from her. Yeah. And it's like I just – it makes me so sad to think of like a baby who – literally just like can't get enough of like can't even get enough of like one parent's attention you Mm -hmm. know oh it just it just hits home you know it's yeah it's like yeah this baby is very lucky it's a very very lucky baby yeah and phoebe just you're right like the way that she says it in like just such a genuine way of like being Mm -hmm. like this conflict that you're having is a beautiful awesome thing and like sees it through that lens you know and and it's just so interesting the way that like carol or susan and Mm -hmm. and ross sort of like yeah you know the look on their face when they hear that of just like reality check you know and we were watching this with our sister-in-law Allie, and she brought up the moment the the idea of like this is such a progressive moment in friends where they're they're turning what could be seen as like you know, this unconventional partnership of, like, people raising this child. Or something written, like, could very easily be written in, like, a normative script of being, like, dysfunctional. Yeah, exactly. It's, like, you know, you could view this and be like, this is so, quote-unquote, dysfunctional, like you said, but then turning it around into this, like, no, actually, it's a beautiful thing that this child is going to have so many parents who love it. Yeah. Rather than, you know, so, like, just, like... This yeah. idea of being dysfunctional yeah. because and the dad's not in the picture or something exactly. to that extent, you know? And they're both fighting about the fact that, like, they're not going to have their idea of picture-perfect life. And it's sort of like Phoebe's presence is, like, well, like, taking away, like, your perception of what is, like, normal or your picture-perfect. Like, see what the actual value is here on the table, you know, instead of just feeling disappointed. Yeah. And it's just – it's so – it's so, so powerful. It's so great. So then they decide that they're going to boost Phoebe into the vent. And then we get, again, another bunch of great lines. I was laughing my butt off at some of these lines. Like, it's just so funny. Like, Phoebe reports like she's a news reporter of what's going on in the <laughs> vent. She's like, well, Susan, I see what appears to be a dark vent. It is, in fact, a dark, a dark vent. vent. <laughs> Such good Okay, writing. one of my favorite lines is, hey, you forgot your legs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so good. But they get the idea of the baby's name because Phoebe is Phoebe who gave them this like unconventional wisdom is yeah. wearing the hospital worker Ben's uniform and she's like, I'm hospital worker Ben. And so they like take this moment to, I guess, honor Phoebe's speech and also like this moment that they had between them in which they like connected for a brief moment to name yeah. this you know, their child. Thank God Carol was on board. That would suck. <laughs> they were like, we came to this beautiful conclusion. She's like, ah, I hate Ben. <laughs> like, I know, right? So. But 
<laughs> I wonder if she does does hate Ben, but she's so tired of fighting with them. <laughs> yeah, I know. Who knows? Um, but but she, then she says the line. She's so funny. She's like, how come you never – like, it's not considered funny in the show, but I thought it was funny. She's like, how come you never mentioned Ben before? And it's like, it's a name. Like, what a weird thing to <laughs> Why say. Why didn't you? <laughs> Why didn't you mention the name Ben before? Like, do you want no. me to, like, name all billions of names that exist in the world? <laughs> like, it is a very common name, though. How do you yeah, know them? Exactly. But also it didn't have the meaning, right? Yeah, and so it's like um, – but I think it's just – it's just, it's just so beautiful because it's like this is the origin story of mm-hmm. Ben's name, which I think is like makes it so much more powerful. And I think it's such a beautiful thing to make it his name because then they'll always remember that moment in the closet and like Phoebe's words. And like that is like what is the central most important thing to raising this child mm-hmm. is that there's like three whole parents that want its love, you know, yeah. and want to love it, yeah. you know. And that's that's the most – that is that is the value, you yeah, know. it's so great. <sighs> yeah and i yeah it's just it's so i'm just i yeah i have so many feels about this episode because like i'm i'm sad for ross in this episode in a lot of ways like at the end you know when he's well maybe we'll talk about that in a second but like so all the other friends pop into the hospital room again where the fuck is susan and carol's family we don't know <laughs> so weird but um and so then they're monica's holding the baby and she's so cute and then <laughs> i will always have gum <laughs> so cute i remember uh, our grandmother on our dad's side always had had these like white mints do you remember those they're uh-huh. like candy mints uh, nana used to have wore those originals oh, right yeah. yeah yeah um but anyways yeah and then uh and then we also get another great line where rachel's like i can't believe one of us has one of these and then Chandler's like i still am one of these and that's a line that i use all the time whenever i'm looking at nora i'm like oh my god i can't believe you have a baby mark and ally i'm like i still am one of these like, yeah it's great it feels like it but um, yeah, and then we get the final scene of the episode, and this is where I think that it's kind of sad for Ross, where he's, like, trying to show Ben what it's like when he's going to be gone. Like, sometimes I'll be here, but then sometimes I'm going to go away, and then I'll come back, but then sometimes I'll go away for longer, but I'll always come back, and it's just so sad. Like, and it's sad because, like, you know, a, a lot of parents do this, and a lot of children are raised and have wonderful wonderful meaningful lives with like having a parent who's not there all the time like that's not to say anything against that but it's just it must be so hard like i'm not concerned about this child having a good upbringing because ross isn't around it's just like i can imagine it'd be really sad for ross not being around you know right well yeah i mean i mean yeah it's i definitely get that because like at the beginning especially it's hard to not like especially if Carol is breastfeeding, you just you just can't be away from the baby for more than yeah. like two hours, you know. Yeah. Um. And so yeah, it just it's it's a different way to navigate things. Yeah. And it's definitely like hard to readjust that. But again, like coming back to like Phoebe, like the sentiment of Phoebe's statement, it's like it's not about like at this point, it's it's not about you like you can have your own grief in it right but there's like also like what is the actual value for this child like Mm -hmm. yeah that's what that's what i was saying yeah like i'm not concerned that this child's not gonna like be grown up as well because ross isn't around 24 (laughs) 7 definitely not worried about that but like i'm it's just like i can imagine it would be very it would be tough so hard Mm -hmm. yeah so but yeah, so that was our episode. That, that was that was intense. Let's talk a little bit about who you think is the best friend. Do you, would you vote Phoebe or Chandler here? Um, okay, I also put like Joey down as a contender because mm-hmm. he was like not for the immediate group, but he was like a good friend, a, to such a, a good friend to like a stranger, which I yeah. thought was really interesting. Yeah. Um, and then who I put down as the worst friend was Rachel. Yeah, for sure. The worst <laughs> friend in this episode. <laughs> also, okay. Ali, our sister-in-law who watched it, um, the DVD version with us right before this was sort of like, how, like, does, does Carol even know Rachel? Like <laughs> Rachel came into the picture after ross and carol broke up so like it makes sense that carol was like friends with everyone but not rachel you know so it's just it's so weird why is rachel there (laughs) yeah um yeah it's true 
Uh, but even Joey, because we get a flashback episode in season three, and Joey only comes into the show like just a few weeks before. Yeah, that's like the impression that's given, eh? Yeah. Just a few weeks before. And and then there's a later episode where Joey kind of makes a joke at Carol, and Carol's like, you know, we're really not close enough for you to say that. And so, <laughs> yeah. like, I think there's also implications that, like, Chan- uh, like Carol and Joey aren't very close. So it's, like, right, yeah. it's kind of just weird that, like, Carol's got all these people in this Like, it room. makes sense for Monica. She's family. Yeah, for you know? sure. And I can even imagine Chandler, too, because, yeah. like, Chandler was, um, you know, they met, Ross met Carol in college, and Chandler and Ross yeah. were friends together in college. in college. So they've been, like, she he's been around for a while. Mm-hmm. And then Phoebe, like, kind of. And yeah. so it's just, uh, it's... It's very strange. It's weird. But... Anywho. Yeah. I do, I I don't know. See, I'm torn between Chan... Like, I get that your vote is for Joey, but I just, like... I'm not actually voting for Joey. Oh, okay. I'm voting for Phoebe. Like, I mean, I, I get that you're nominating Joey. Oh, okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um... You're voting for Phoebe. Okay, see, the thing is I'm a little bit torn because I do feel like Phoebe wasn't intending to be a good good friend in that moment. She just was kind of like an accidental good friend, whereas I think Chandler was like actively trying to support Monica throughout the day. One was like right. more intentional than the other. But like I, I, I will give it to Phoebe because that speech was just epic and it was so important and it brought them together and – I mm-hmm. think, like, that's why I, I will give it to her. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess Phoebe, best friend of the episode, with a hard runner-up with Chandler. Yeah. Agreed. I really like that we've started implementing this. I, think I know. It was, we were trying to, like, get other things going at the beginning of the podcast, like, different things, you know, like, what's your best quote? What's your best this? But, like, this one kind of it's, came it's, in naturally and feels yeah. good. Yeah. I also want to point out who was best addressed this episode sure. according to our polls. Um, so just a reminder to everyone, uh, our, not always am I doing best dressed right now because we don't always have the time. Mm. But essentially you just do the slidey to vote on which one – like how you want to rate each episode, each outfit. <laughs> Words. <laughs> and um, – and then from there, we find the averages and choose who won from there. And guess who won the best outfit? Susan. No. I was so sad about this. Phoebe? It was – no, it was Rachel. Mm. That happens a lot. Her two episodes – her two – oh, my goodness. Guys, words. Um, her two outfits were, like, pretty stellar. And then second was Phoebe. And third was Susan. Right. Actually, Susan might have even been fourth. And maybe f- – Tied with Monica for fourth. I didn't like Monica's outfits at all. Anyways, okay. That's it. That's our episode. So don't forget. Let's just wrap up this here. Don't forget. We have a promo code. Smelly Cat. All caps. Going over. Saltyyoga.ca. Um, well, c- included in the show notes. <laughs> Salty Yoga Online. It's Salty in the yoga show notes. Online. You can also Google it. Um, they have two uh, actual studios as well. One in Peterborough and one in Kingston, Ontario. And then, so go buy your friends gifts, buy yourself some, uh, go go try out the free trial. I'm losing my words, guys. Mm -hmm. Uh, Don't forget that next Monday, also when this comes out, literally tomorrow, is uh, our open watch party for everyone to the public. For our first season finale of Friends. And we're going to have our wrap-up live party live stream on december 5th at 5 30 p.m eastern standard times december 15th did i what did i say you said december 5th oh man i'm sorry guys (laughs) december 15th (laughs) struggling the struggle is real and don't forget that if you become a patron now we're going to continue doing some watch parties for some holiday parties with the possibility of doing a secret podcast don't tell me don't tell emily (laughs) All right. (laughs) Sounds good. So thanks for joining. Uh, My name is Emily. You can find me on Instagram or my website, emilybyoga.com, or just on Instagram, at emilybyoga. That's Emily with an I-E, not a Y. And you can find me, Quinn K. Brunet, at quinnkbrunet.com, or Quinn K. Brunet as a handle, or mindbody with Quinn. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, WT Phalange Podcast. And because we have our last set of polls for this season coming out tomorrow. No. When they listen to this episode, it will be tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Whoops, guys. 
<laughs> it's been a long episode. Um, um, thanks and so much. And keep deconstructing. Keep deconstructing. And diversifying the, the media, media you consume. consume.